Black and white photography has always been a favorite of mine, and for literally decades, Nick Silver Effects has been the premier tool for making amazing black and white images. And with every upgrade, Silver Effects gets better and better. Let's start with a quick tour, and those of you who are already familiar with Silver Effects will immediately notice some welcome changes. For this demo, I'll be using Photolab as the host. I already have my image selected. This is a photo of Varanasi, India. And to open this in the Nick Collection, I'll click on the Nick Collection button down here in the bottom right, and then choose the tool that I want. In this case, Silver Effects. Let's start with a quick tour. Over on the left, you'll see a list of presets. As you select each one, a variety of filters are added to the right, building up the image that you see in front of you. As you can see, there's a ton of different presets in here, each one unique, and each one providing different ideas about what you can do with your photo or how the different filters work. In fact, it's a great way to learn what this tool can do. By simply going through the presets, you'll learn a lot about what's possible in here. To reset your image, scroll to the very top, and there is a neutral preset which removes all effects and takes you back to the beginning. You may have noticed something different about the way Silver Effects works today versus how it used to. Here I have something called Film Types, and if I collapse that, there's nothing left. All of the filters that you add are stored over here on the left and don't show up on the right until you need them. So now Silver Effects works more like Color Effects. As I select filters on the left, they get added on the right. If I'm not using it, it's not there. And if I want to get rid of it, just click the X to take it out. The recommended workflow when working with Silver Effects is to start with film types. This is something that you can't remove because this is the translation from color to black and white. Right now you see that it's set to neutral. All the colors are at zero and there's a flat curve on here. So literally all that's happened is the image is converted to black and white. But if I click on the film types, you'll notice that there's a variety of different film stocks that are a great place to start for your image. Each one of these renders your image completely differently. So it's a really good idea to roll through these and see which ones work for your image. I'm going to use this one here, Ilford XP2 Super 400. And you can see for this one that the color sensitivity has changed as well as the curve. Also down underneath that, you'll see how much grain has been added to the image and that's been affected as well. Understanding how the color sensitivity sliders makes a big impact on how your image looks. If I grab the red slider and drag that down or up, that's essentially saying that the film is more or less sensitive to the color red. But I don't really know where red is other than just dragging the slider around and seeing what happens. Since you can't see the color image, it's hard to know where the red is or was in your scene. But now you can see the color image. Check this out. Down on the bottom left, there's a new tab called Original Image. As I select that, it shows me the original color image in a little window so I can see exactly where the colors are. If I wanted to affect my blue sky here and I dragged the blue slider back and forth but not much was happening, well, now I know why. Looking at the color image, there really is very little blue in this shot. This original image reference can be very, very handy, especially when working with film sensitivity, but also when working with color masking. Another way to see the color image is to use the compare menu. It used to be that you could only compare to the neutral black and white, which means when you press and hold on compare, you see the neutral black and white image, and then when you release, you see your filtered one. However, now you can change this to show the original image, which means you'll now see the color image when you click and hold on compare. All right, let's do some more work to the image. This image is clearly quite a bit hazy, so I'm gonna add clear view to this to see if I can clean this up a bit. I'll click plus next to clear view and add that to my filter stack. Now, as I take the intensity up, we can see that we're cutting through a bunch of that fog. And that looks pretty cool, but it might be a little bit too much. I definitely like the clarity that's happening up here on the front of the buildings, but it's getting a little bit too clear back here. I kind of like the way it faded off into the distance. A new capability is that I can now mask clear view. So I'm going to use a control line and then click and drag across the building here to mask out the part of it that I want. Now this doesn't quite look like what I was hoping it would, so let's take a look at what the mask actually looks like. That has created the control line, but the image didn't change. That's because my clear view intensity slider over here is set for the entire image. So I'll take that back down to zero and then use a new intensity slider that has appeared along with this control line to add intensity only where the mask is letting it through. If I want to see exactly what that mask is affecting, I can click here to preview the mask. And of course I can adjust it if I need to. This seems to work pretty well though, so I'll hide the mask and adjust the sensitivity some more. Looking pretty good. If I toggle that on and off, we can see the effect that it's made. Clear view has been applied to the buildings here, but the ones on this side have been left alone. Another tool that you can now add local adjustments to is selective tones. 
With Selective Tone selected, I'm going to grab a simple control point and drop it on the whole of this boat here. It's a little bit too dark, and I just want to brighten that up a bit. So I'll select that, preview my mask. That should work out well. And then take the shadows up just a little bit. Perfect. There's tons of other things you can do in Silver Effects. Maybe I want to add some image borders to this to make it look like a print. There's lots of different varieties in here, and these look pretty cool and can be adjusted quite a bit as well. Maybe that's a bit big. I'll size it down a little bit. Or maybe you just want to add a vignette. I'll get rid of the image borders, add a vignette in here instead. Let's try the different presets in here and find something that works. I could also add a little bit of toning. Maybe I want to make it look kind of sapia. So let's add the toning filter and try some of these presets. Some of these could work pretty well for this image. Something like this will definitely make it look like a really old photo. Silver Effects is awesome. With the refined layout, the addition of the original color image view, and of course the new color mask tool, which we didn't use here, but is in all of the new filters, Silver Effects is more powerful than ever before.